All right. Well, hello, David G. Hello, Terry Cole. Ooh, welcome to Hello Freedom. For those of you who don't know David G., you must not know me very well, but if you don't, he is an internationally recognized stress management expert, corporate trainer, meditation teacher. I know him because he's my meditation teacher, or he was my meditation teacher a million years ago, and then just became my BFF. So I'm super excited. He is a friend of the show. He's been on before. Um, we have so many things to talk about, but one of the things I want to talk about first and foremost is your brand spanking new book and it's not out yet well it will be actually by the time we this this is going to air in the, later in december so right. doesn't the book come out 12, 12. oh yeah 12, well, this 12. will air right around december 12th 2017 so you guys will know but if it happens to be a day before you can pre-order it like i just did and get all your free gifts which is amazing so tell me about sacred powers what inspired you to write it why should we care about it tell us uh, first of all, Terry Cole, let me tell you how much I love you. That's, that's, number, that's number one. Um, and I am such a fan of you and all the work that you do. So um, thank you uh, for taking this time and thank you for uh, including me in Hello Freedom! Yeah, I'm talking uh, about. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I, I had in a past life, a, a few years ago, I wrote Secrets of Meditation and that was really my uh, the beginning of, of my journey into the present moment and into so many of the ancient teachings and all the different ways that we can get present and live in the present moment and connect to the stillness and silence that rests within. Um, and then I wrote Destressifying uh, because a lot of people in the mainstream were, what, what's with that kooky stuff? Um, and since I work with law enforcement, since I work with the military and I work in the corporate world, I really wanted to have a book that people in the corporate world could use um, really to take their life to the next level. What and I want to say about de-stressifying for one sec is that I loved that book so much because I also work with super high functioning people who are stressed out of their minds who completely um, responded to so many of the strategies and the techniques but also the languaging in de-stressifying. You've really, really made it accessible. So I'm just saying for those of you, if you haven't read it, you should read that one too because it's amazing. Anyway, back to go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and I figured I was done. I figured I've, I've written the two books, you know, and then who knows? And uh, over the years, virtually every single day, I get an email from someone or meet someone and they say, listen, I'm at a crossroads in my life. I'm, uh, uh, I don't know if I should leave my spouse. Uh, I'm not sure if I should quit my job. I'm not sure if I should say yes to this treatment that I'm getting for my health. And uh, so what should I do? And I don't want to be the person to say, oh, yeah, leave that loser or, or quit that job. Um, so I figured, well, why don't I um, really write a book and share all the various um, uh, internal powers that we have to allow us to make the best decisions? Uh, so I wrote this book pretty much for anyone who's finding themselves at a crossroads in their life or at a fork in the road or unsure of stay or go uh, rather than asking someone to tell you should you do this or should you not do this uh, i figured uh, i'll dig deep into the most ancient teachings that have been going on for thousands and thousands of years combine those with the most modern uh, cutting edge um, whether that's in uh, basic neurology or, or psychiatry or psychology uh, or a lot of the, the therapies that are going on. Let me see if I can find the threads that have existed for thousands of years that are the true, 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 true truths. And uh, that way, rather than me telling you, get divorced or stay in your job, um, you could dive deep into your own soul, into your own heart, and really into your own conscious choice-making machine and then make the best decision because you'd have the tools. And the tools are resting inside everybody. Mm -hmm. It's just a function of us either blocking them or being constricted or being conditioned or not even knowing that we have them available to us. You know, I think that there's something that's so powerful about the, the knowledge that and sharing the knowledge that, of course, I agree with you that 
what, what everyone needs is inside of them. But I like to say sometimes you just need a great coach or someone. I feel like with clients, I'm a catalyst or I'm like a good GPS to help them find it within themselves. Right. You know, and, I, and, that's, and that's why, you know, as a therapist, you know, when someone says, what should I do? Uh, you know, you know, the, the, the response is, well, let's dig deep into your choice making abilities and, and find out. Um, and so you tease that out of people when you're working with your clients and when you're working um, with, with all the people, you know, that uh, that you work with in the world. Um, since I don't work with people on a one on one basis, this was my opportunity to say, OK, here's this tool that you can bring to Terry Cole when you're sitting with her. And that'll help the two of you make the best decisions. You're like, <laughs> look at page 142. That's where the answer lies for you, buddy. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> So tell us a little bit about, um, you're talking about the five, um, I guess they're tools. What do you call them? They're the five, what, the five? Uh, well, the subtitle of the book is The Five Secrets to Awakening Transformation, but they're not really secrets. They are, they are tools. Um, they're actually principles. And so I identified uh, five main threads that seem to run through virtually every culture. Um, these are not religious, you know, this is not a religious book. Um, but every culture, every wisdom um, philosophy, and they are the divine principle of one, and I can talk about that a little later, the divine principle of awareness, the divine principle of rebirth, the divine principle of infinite flow, mm -hmm. and the divine principle of inner fire. And each of those, you know, as I looked around there, you know, those are like, for me, those seem to be the universal truths that that the threads that run through virtually the most indigenous cultures and our most modern cultures right now. And so I figured, let me see if I can find within each of those principles, no different than gravity or electricity. These things mm -hmm. have existed since time began, um, since man and woman first walked the earth, uh, since any animals first walked the earth. And uh, let me dive deep into these and see if I can find um, different aspects of ourselves that we can awaken to help um, bring us clarity and to help bring us uh, focus and and really help us make the best decisions. So this is really, uh, this could have just been, you know, sacred powers sounded cool to me, mm -hmm. uh, but this is really, you know, making your best decision. Right. So what would you say in your own life experience, tell us um, and my listeners a little bit about your own evolution, right, to your own sort of awakening, um, so what, what is it that brought you to this work? Because you had a whole different life. I did. I did. And so actually, I started the book. Um, the, uh, the introduction to the book really goes deep into my past where I'm hanging out on Wall Street and walking in Soho one day uh, in the wake of 9-11. Mm -hmm. And I was feeling pretty devastated. I had worked in one of the higher floors in Tower 2 in the World Trade Center. And um, I was empty. I was totally clueless. I didn't know there were tools. I didn't know that, um, and that's the thing. If I had at least known there were some tools, maybe I could have leaned in on them, but, uh, but I didn't. And so I had to sort of like limit myself to just wandering around aimlessly, hoping that I would find some kind of solution. And uh, I'm wandering down the street in Soho past a row of cardboard boxes that uh, people we're living in. And uh, suddenly a guy uh, in one of the cardboard boxes reaches his hand out, grabs my pant leg and says, what's going to be on your tombstone? And of course, I figured, you know, this is, I didn't have an answer. I, I, everything stopped. The world around me stopped. The traffic stopped. The noise stopped. The people on the street stopped. Um, I just gasped. I held my breath. And normally I would have just said, you know, here's five dollars or leave me alone or I'm in my own world. And we just I just leaned into him and we just our eyes met. We just engaged. And um, at a certain point in the conversation, and we had this very, very intense conversation and he was really just grumbling. And I reached into my pocket to pull out some money and he he, he pinned my hand inside my pocket. And he said, it's not about the money. It's about finding your sacred powers. You know, and this is like 2001. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I didn't know what to do or, or, or what to say. 
And um, it was, uh, I, I viewed that as a message from, from the divine. So whether you believe in some of these, you know, spontaneous moments where God is speaking to you or mm-hmm. where you're getting that message from someone, you know, I called it, you know, essentially like a sacred whisper. Mm-hmm. Here was this guy this, as a channel, uh, you know, a channel to the divine. And I staggered, you know, I walked away a little bit uh, after that and uh, sat down on the steps of an apartment. And, uh, you know, I could have chalked it up to kooky New York, you know, just another day. But this guy was so powerful and so intense that I went home that night and I said to my wife, um, uh, I, I, need to, uh, I need to quit my job. And she was like, uh, oh, okay, if that's what you think you need to do. I said, I think I need to, to really just do a, a, a deep dive. I just met this guy and he told me to find my sacred powers and I'm empty, I'm purposeless, I have no meaning in life, I'm hating my job, I'm, I'm just confused about you know, what, what's my next step. And uh, so she said to me, well, why don't you go to check out Deepak Chopra? He's, um, he's doing a, a meditation retreat in Oxford, England. And I'd never even heard of Deepak at the time. And I was like, uh, okay, I'm fairly obedient. <laughs> it's a secret to my, to my long marriage. And uh, so I headed out to uh, Oxford, uh, England, connected with Deepak. And because it was right after 9-11, I expected there to be a thousand people there and there were you know, less than 50. And so in that moment, we were like, oh, uh, here's an opportunity. Uh, to really have an intimate week of uh, diving deep into my practice and getting some really powerful guidance. And when that was done, I, I do what anyone does after they've spent a, a week with Deepak. I headed off to India uh, in search of the guru and, uh, you know, did my own little eat, pray, love uh, without the uh, eating and the love, <laughs> the last prayer. And, uh, you know, went out there in search of answers. And I traveled, you know, way into the Himalayas to see His Holiness the Dalai Lama, he wasn't there that day. And uh, I just kept wandering around looking for answers. I bathed in the Ganges, I prayed every morning, I meditated, I was practicing yoga. Uh, And then one day while I was laying in a hammock in a cashew forest in Kerala, I was reading the Bhagavad Gita and I came across uh, chapter two, verse 48, uh, which says, yoga sta kuru karmani, establish yourself in the present moment and then perform action. And that was my aha moment. I was like, of course, just get still and then listen to the whispers in your heart. And uh, I was so excited. I raced home and uh, wasn't really racing. It took me about 50 hours on buses and waiting in Mumbai, the Mumbai airport for about 30 hours. Um, (laughs) But when I got back home to New York, I was just like hanging out. And a friend of mine said, all you do now is sit around and meditate. And I was like, I know. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that spectacular? And they're like, no, you have to do something with your life. You should teach people to meditate. And I was like, oh, come on, I'm from New York. I don't care about, about anyone else's meditation. And so uh, my friend said, no, 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 if you really want to learn something, learn to teach it. And that began my journey. I reconnected with Deepak. Um, I went out to his center. Um, I started working you know, closely with him and Dr. David Simon. Uh, I began teaching uh, at the Chopra Center, then I became Dean of Chopra Center University. Um, that's where I met you, Terry Cole. Indeed, uh, it's true. And so that's where our, our seed uh, began. And um, in 2012, after 10 years of apprenticing under Deepak and David, I left that world to share these teachings with the world. And so that's, um, I've got this real world 20 year business career um, in my back pocket. Um, but really what I want to do is teach the, the, the deeper meanings, uh, the, the, the deeper teachings, and help people take their lives to the next level. And I figured um, that's really what's beating inside my heart, so let me, let me follow my heart. What I find amazing, and thanks for sharing that, that background story, because I think it's, it's really interesting for people to see. Uh, people love to project things onto us and people would love to project you've got your long hair you've got your beard that you know you were born you came out of the womb this way and anyone who knows you knows you how for me I was you know my quick story about you and I is that I'd been trying to meditate for many years unsuccessfully I would do a weekend at the open center and do it for like two days and then be done everyone bothered me everyone got on my nerves everyone was too like NPR weirdly mellow like I don't know I just couldn't I couldn't vibe 
with, but I kept coming back to meditation as I just knew this would be the thing that would change my life. Right. And you and I met, um, at a weekend that they don't even do anymore at the church center, but it was called a weekend within. Um, right. and Vic and I only went to that because Vic was working with David Faraday, the famous golfer. So they had this column together in golf for many years. And David, all of a sudden we get, we get an envelope in the mail. And I open it up, and it's a $3,000 gift certificate to the Chopra Center. Nice. So I say to Vic, uh, why is Anita Faraday sending us a $3,000 gift certificate to the Chopra Center? And I had heard of Deepak, but I had yet to read The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, which I also right. really loved and felt like it was a turning point for me. But So he's like, I don't know, call her. So I, I, I said, I'm just going to call David. So I called David. I was like, um, why are you sending this? And he says... I can't do an Irish accent. I really wish I could because it's a good story with one, but I'll do my terrible one, which is, Terry, you know I'm a raging alcoholic. I was like, yeah, worst kept secret. We all know. He was like, well, I was at one of those black tie fairs that I effing hate, and I apparently, I apparently, I don't know what he was saying, like he bid on something. In the, the end of the story was that he actually thought that the Chopra Center, he decided he was going to get sober, and he thought the Chopra Center was like a detox center. <laughs> so, so then when he calls them, they're like, you know, we're not that kind of center. And so he's like, but I don't want to go meditate. So maybe you guys, I thought maybe you and Victor would like to go. I was like, oh, well, great. yeah, I will. So he's a funny person. But, but how you and I connected is that I was covering, I was writing at that point for Chris Carr's website. This is before I had my own platform at all. And it was... Then it was called Crazy Sexy Cancer Member or Crazy Sexy Cancer sure. Survivors or something like that. Right. Crazy Sexy Cancer. Yes. And nobody was, nobody was allowed to. We weren't supposed to take pictures. And you and I have a, this is before your phones took pictures, people. Just so you know what I'm talking about. And <laughs> I was like, I, 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 you know, you and I met and I was like, I know we're not supposed to take pictures. You're like, go up. I'll take, give me your, give me your camera. I'll take a picture. And I was like, I like this guy. And not just because you're a rule breaker, because you know, I appreciate a fellow rule breaker. It was more about the, the, the way that you gave the information on meditation. And like, it was such a New York way, which I appreciated. And that you sort of threw down the gauntlet with the 21 days. So it was basically, you were like, Hey, go home, meditate twice a day for 21 days. Then if nothing happens, who gives a crap? Don't do it again. Like there was something so like, I don't know. I felt very much like, mm, he's, he's like, this is like a challenge. Like I'm doing this. Right. And, um, the whole lack of magical thinking sort of where there was so much, um, that you shared just about your own journey. I just felt like, listen, this guy's a little bit nuts. I'm completely nuts. So if he can become a meditate, you know, if this is, this kind of a person can meditate, I think I can meditate too. And so it really dispelled you yourself, for me, dispelled the thought of like, I needed to be like a Buddhist monk to do it. I was like, I could, because you're also super funny, super smart, but you're funny, like your delivery is funny and easy. So anyway, I say that because I know with all the other books, I haven't read this one yet, and I can't wait to, I just ordered it, um, that there's an accessibility about the way that you share what you know and what you know is very specific to you. So it comes through this lens, your lens, the David G lens, which is a lens personally I really love. So I cannot wait to get my, my hands on this book and to share it with the people in my world. But for those of you listening, if you've always wanted to, if you thought it was something you should do, but you don't feel like you're that kind of person, you you have not been turned on to David G's work. And don't worry, you know in the show notes, you guys, you'll have everything that you need to find him. Join his posse. I'm in his world. Everyone who's in my world is in his world. And I can't believe if you listen to my show that you actually don't know him already. But if you don't, today is your lucky day. So <laughs> go to, and we, we'll put all the links down there that you need. So let's t go back to more about your motivation for this book. And I also know that you just did something. You just did a live event <coughs> In was it in Carlsbad? Uh, yeah. Tell me about that quickly, would you? Was it great? Uh, it was amazing. You know, I uh, 
Yeah, and you have been there, Terry Cole, to the Meditation Nest. I sure have. I can't wait to come back. Yeah, I mean, you know, Terry Cole yeah, has not necessarily shared this, uh, but she's also gone deep, deep into the Masters of Wisdom and, and Meditation teacher training. You know, fifteen weeks online, and then that, and then that week together um, at the Nest, where I actually saw her put on mermaid uh, flippers. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting pictures up in the blog. Don't worry, you guys. Go to the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, yeah, that's great. You know, I, I really like intimate groups. Um, you know, not, not that I don't love, you know, crowds of 500, 1,000 people. Uh, those are very inspirational and they, and they fill me. But when you spend like a whole week with a smaller group of, of people and you really get to know everyone's um, heart in that process. Um, so, yeah, that was like our, uh, our last event um, for the year. But people and, uh, can come and train with you, though, right? The same way that I did. Yes. So, yes. again, Absolutely. we'll put the link for this because it, it is what I did. It's how I'm trained um, officially. And, and, and as you know, um, you know, my goal isn't just to go, here's the script. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Watch your breath. Okay, you're healed. Um, that's, <laughs> you know, I, it, for me, it's important that people, everyone's got a different access point to these teachings. And everyone's got a different... Uh, thing that resonates with them. Um, and I do come out of a very, you know, I come out of the corporate world. You know, I didn't come out of the woo-woo. You know, I look like, you know, I've been a Cali surfer my whole life. Um, but no, <laughs> you're from like, like Newark, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, you know, when, when, uh, what, what I share with people is really coming through that lens. It's real world practical application. And uh, you know, sometimes there is some woo stuff, you know, or stuff that we can't explain. And other times, um, you know, like some ho homeless man on the street giving me the most profound lesson of, of my life. Um, and other times there, there is the, the, the real evidence-based science that helps support so much of these teachings. And I right. believe that, um, you know, I believe that everybody has a different access point. And because of that, some people really need to, you know, spend time on a daily basis with, uh, with a coach. Some people can, can handle uh, laser coaching once a week. Other people, um, you know, they, can, they, they like uh, to download videos and, and learn that way. Uh, and other people like to read. And other people like to listen to podcasts. So, you know, if there's so many different access points. Uh, I personally think uh, whatever works. And I also think that all those things combined can really raise your vibration to the highest possible level because there may be a moment where you needed to talk to somebody and there may be other moments where you just needed to sit and percolate and go through a shavasana and allow all that information to, to integrate into you. And, and, and that's why I, you know, that's why I felt with, um, with sacred powers there's, you know, at, throughout the book, there are also um, links to go where you can, you know, I'll talk about something specific. And then there's a link to a guided meditation or a guided um, experience or an exercise that we do. So this, the book involves um, a lot of self-reflection, requires honesty on behalf of the reader, you know, self-honesty. Uh, you don't have to share it with anybody else, but you have to be willing to go to some, you know, the darker places of your life. And it's not, it's not, a, I'm not a psychotherapist. I'm not a, I'm not a doctor. Um, and, um, you know, what I, what I do is really help people find the place within them where they can start to have the conversation, where they can actually have the dialogue uh, with themselves and get to that space where they can go, oh, I've been dimming my light for like 15 years or maybe longer. Uh, and, you know, it's not incumbent upon me to say, let's go back into that moment where you first dimmed your light. It's just the acknowledgement. You've been dimming your light. Let's find some ways. Let's explore some ways to, to, to undim it, to, exactly. to open that up. And I didn't want to do it like, this isn't my teaching. It's not like, oh, I came up with a, a, a couple of novel uh, aspects. Really what I did was explored some of the powers that we have inside of ourselves, the, the power of presence, uh, the, the power of attention, intention, mm -hmm. and action, um, the power of um, acceptance, release, and new beginnings. Mm. Uh, and, you know, and there's even, you know, and I go deep into just like your, your love revolution. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I go deep into the, the teachings of, of self-love. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, 
I'm just a translator. That's really what, what I am. I found these, this, this ancient wisdom combined with some, some real modern techniques and I'm helping to translate it. Not everybody vibes with my translations, mm-hmm. uh, that's, and that's okay. Yeah. Um, but um, they're all practical, they're all real. I'm not really big on theory. Uh, I was trained by, by amazing uh, teachers uh, throughout you know, the course of my the last 15 years. Um, but you know, I, I'm not trying to clone them either. You know, that's, uh, I think, and as you know, you know, the best teachers get out of the way. Exactly. And, let, and, and let the wisdom, let the knowledge flow into someone so they can then translate that into their own um, wisdom. But I believe that we have the ability on a daily basis uh, to, rather than feeling overwhelmed, because we all do, we used to have five choices, now it's about a thousand or five, and that increases every single day. Right. Uh, but we have, the, we have the ability through, obviously, through meditation and through the power of connecting to the stillness and silence that rests within, and by connecting to our heart, we have the ability to sort of like tone it all down, slow it all down, and really move through the world uh, with greater grace and with greater ease. Mm-hmm. And um, it's, it's my hope that people will, if they're interested in that, not everyone is, but if they're interested in that, that they can use this as a guide to help them on a daily basis um, <clears throat> if different aspects of their life are constricted. Because we know that even if we're high achievers, there's usually one part of our life that's suffering. Always. <laughs> uh, you know, we've, we've just drifted our attention away from that onto something else so we can be magnificent. You know, we've seen it in, in, in some of the greatest people on the planet where they're thriving in so many areas in this one area of their life. It's a little dim, it's a little weak, or it's a little neglected. And so I believe that we can elevate all the components of our life and, right. and raise all of those vibrations um, without without feeling that you have to put pressure on yourself to be, you know, superb. Um, I really believe that perfection Mm -hmm. is um, evolution. As long as we are allowing ourselves to grow and learn, then we are freaking perfect. Yep. And um, because really, DG, there there is no perfection, right? And and this this notion of striving for something like that is so anti-human. It's not the way that we're wired. Like it doesn't work. And it also can have you focusing on the one thing that went wrong in the past 72 hours instead of really being present to everything that has been right. So I'm really anti-perfectionism. And I think that what you're talking about, and it sounds like with the book, is that it's really good for people who are, like you said, either at a crossroads or in a position where they know they need to change something but they're just not sure how. Because you and I can both agree that we know that those changes are going to be the changes with your relationship with yourself, the changes with your own self-knowledge, your own self-awareness, your own self-wisdom, because that, that, that's where the changes have to be. Because from that, maybe you make external changes as well. So I'm super, super psyched. And are you going to be now, people can find you on your website. We'll have all of that. But are you going to be going around? Are you going to be coming to New York for any signings or any anything? You know, I am. But, um, you know, for my other books, you know, I was on, the, you know, all, all the various morning shows and yeah. stuff like that. And for this, um, I'm really just hoping to go to um, various studios. Mm-hmm. So visiting some studios in New York and in L.A. and Toronto and, and um in Vancouver, Great. Uh, down here, in, down here in San Diego. I live in the sweet spot of the universe, which right now we're experiencing lots of fires and scariness. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully, um, you know, that will all uh, move on. But uh, yeah, I'm hoping to, uh, you know, the next 45 days for me mm-hmm. will be uh, lots of planes and lots of studios. Well, great. Um, so, so let me and Vic know when you're in town, though. So I want to see you, and yes. I'm going to be out in LA too. I think in I think in uh, February. So. Oh, nice. Let's make a plan because I want to see you. I want to say thank you so much for spending so much time with us today. And for all of you guys listening, do yourself a favor. Go find my friend, David G. You will thank me. There is no doubt. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I kiss you. I love you. I love you, Terry Cole, and I love your posse, and I love uh, the work that you're doing. You know, I feel that ripple all the time. So uh, if I can give, like, one piece of guidance for all of the listeners – um, you know, we transform the world by transforming ourselves. 
So um, there may be so many things outside of ourselves that we're pointing at or raging at. And, uh, you know, if you want to resist, well, self-care is the most ideal form of resistance. So start there. That is a radical <laughs> concept, my friend. <laughs> Thank you for that piece of advice. And I will see you soon. Love you, Terry Cole. Love you, Thank too, you. Baby.